Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the military vehicle section of this bike rally. Now, all these vehicles are World War II and beyond. Unfortunately, we haven't got any World War I vehicles like the motorcycles had, but uh, we've got something. Remember, some of these vehicles are 70, 75 years old, so uh, they might look modern, they're quite old. Um, Right, we're first into the arena, is a tank destroyer. It's not actually a tank, it's such. There's a look for an outside one. It is... This was the fastest armoured vehicle produced in World War II. It had a top speed of 55 miles an hour. Here is only in bottom gear. It's powered by a nine-cylinder radial engine, actually taken, adapted from an aircraft, which produces 450 brake horsepower. A modern armored vehicle now, something I knew nothing about until it rolled up today. And it's called a Simba. Now I originally thought it might be a French vehicle. It's sort of taken after the continental design, but it's made by GKM Defence, and it was exported. It didn't use it in the British Army. They tried some, but they didn't like them. Some ended up in service in the Philippines. A classic vehicle now, the half track, as the name implies, it's half tracked, half wheels. They were made by International White, American origin again. These were used for transporting troops as a personnel carrier. They're lightly armoured. They can motorcycles now. Both matchless by the looks, both classic military bikes. 350 matchlesses, made in World War II. And they were the first British bike to incorporate telescopic forks which was quite revolutionary in those days, but a sidecar wheel is driven. That was an idea that the Germans first got off the ground, and then the British copied it. But when they were released from the army, all the drive shafts to the sidecar wheel were removed or cut, because they considered them to be dangerous. Normally people riding sidecars They're the forerunner of all the modern 4x4s you see today. American origin vehicle, a Dodge, Dodge weapons carrier. This is his class as a three-quarter ton vehicle. Could obviously carry a lot more, but they would carry three quarters of a ton anywhere. And these are produced in variants. There's a command car version, a 6x6 version, and uh, ambulance version of these Dodges because the Americans are really versatile in adapting their models to suit. You would never actually run low on fuel. This is a Continental vehicle made by Auto Union after the war. Now this is about the latest Land Rover you'll see here today. This is a Gulf War one and it's all fully kitted out as you can see. We've got the fuel tanks on the front, extra tanks. Well, Charlie vehicle of World War II, an Austin Tilly. Good to see you again, sir. These were nicknamed Tillys from the uh, abbreviation from utility, because that's just what they were. They were just two-wheel drive vehicles, used for general logistics around bases, fetching and carrying, they were no good for combat, that's obvious. As I said, at the end of the war, for the landings in Normandy especially, because they were, the harbour facilities were bombed out and completely used. Now then, the 432. This should have come in a bit earlier behind the other armour, but this is British, again, was specifically designed for the Sherman. The Sherman's on the top there. 
See the amphibious vehicle I was talking about earlier was another first for the Americans because they had fitted this vehicle with adjustable tire pressures. And that's the thing you can get on your 2014 car, but consider this to be 70 odd years ago. You could adjust the tire pressure from the driver's seat because often when they were landing in different conditions, they had three settings they had sand, rock, and shale, so you can vary your pressures accordingly. Otherwise, if you had them hard, they'd often get stuck. So that was another first. Uh, the Sherman on the back of the Diamond here, you can see a bit of smoke out the back. It's just run up the engine. This is a nine cylinder radial engine. And the reason it smokes so much is not because it's clapped out. When you stop a radial engine, all the oil tends to drain to the bottom cylinders. Turn the speed now. A top speed of about 25 miles an hour. Manual gearbox. Manufacturer, oh, 
suicide. So you've got some volunteers. It actually killed the citron. I don't know if it's disabled it completely. They're going to try and get it to the middle.